You know, uh, you can tell a lot about an honoree uh, by the person they pick to introduce him. <laughs> Chris, I don't know what you did to offend these people, <laughs> but you need to apologize right now. It's a rare thing when a university can lay claim to an alumnus whose work has been held up even once as embodying the very best this industry has to offer. It's rarer still if he happens to earn that distinction twice. But it is virtually unheard of and worth special recognition for an alumnus to reach the heights that Chris Davis has in his 20 years as a reporter and editor in newspapers. Put simply, in an industry as competitive as the world of high-stakes investigative reporting, Chris has no equal. Stories he has written or edited have been named finalists for the Pulitzer Prize seven times since 2008, and they have four times been named winners. More important than the recognition or the reforms that have come about only because Chris and his teams dug into thorny, complicated issues. Because of the work he has led, Florida school children are safer from predatory teachers who used to move unchecked from district to district. The lax regulation of the mortgage and homeowner insurance industries are now laid bare. Homes that have abused boys and girls in the name of religion have been shuttered. A county program that paid slumlords to house the homeless and squalor has been shut down. The state of Florida has been held accountable for slashing funding for mental hospitals. A school district on the Tampa Bay is finally spending the time and money to aid the black kids it has long neglected. Chris has pursued excellence relentlessly throughout his career, but when he's attained it, it's always with great humility. Though he would have been well within his rights to put his name on any of the stories that I just mentioned, he always has chosen to remain in the background, content to play the role of coach and confidant, and to carry his heavy part of the load in relative obscurity. For these reasons, I am proud to introduce to you tonight my friend and the best editor I've ever known Chris Davis. Yeah. So uh, we're here tonight to celebrate the uh, the people in this room who've worked so hard to uh, uh, become successful at what they do. But we should take a moment to think about this institution that we share and the people behind it. Um, you know, I learned a lot studying here. I learned how to do my craft, how to write and report stories. I learned about politics, uh, America's social problems. I learned about world's religions. While I was here, I got to work at the Coker Center, where I learned about ballet and the uh, symphony. Uh, as an usher on campus, I got to go to my first rock concert, and I saw, saw the Rolling Stones play live. Uh, I also got to meet people and make friends from exotic places all over the world including uh, Wahala, South Carolina. <laughs> I learned some uh, life lessons, too. I learned how to live on a budget. I learned how to bail a friend out of jail. Uh, I may have learned how to shotgun a beer. <laughs> but when I think back on my years here, uh, the most important thing I learned wasn't in a classroom, wasn't in a dorm room. It happened over coffee. Uh, over chats with my professors uh, as we pass in the hallway or after class. I learned the importance of being a coach and a mentor. <clears throat> I learned that from so many of my professors. One of the best is here tonight, Ernie Wiggins, who gave me my first opportunity to discover investigative reporting um, and what's become my life's calling. Uh, in a hundred little chats, Ernie and my other professors at USC uh, taught me the, the importance of 
really listening to people, <clears throat> of thinking critically and acting fairly, of recognizing that your perspective isn't the only perspective. When I think back on my time at Carolina, that's what I remember best. Having great professors who were more than just experts and lecturers, but who took the time to be coaches and mentors, to listen and to challenge your thinking, and to dispense advice. So if you don't think that's a powerful gift, let me share a story with you. My dad was a professor at USC. Uh, he spent most of his career teaching at Coastal Carolina back when it was a part of the system. Over the years, I've run into his former students in the oddest of places. A couple of years ago, I was in Florida at a grocery store with my wife. Uh, we passed, got, passed by a man wearing a Gamecocks t-shirt, and I went over to introduce myself and say hi. Turns out he had graduated from Coastal Carolina. Uh, and my father had been one of his professors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Th this, this chance passing at a grocery store became a moment in my life that I, I'll never forget. <clears throat> this man, you know, 20 years removed from being in my father's classroom. told me that my dad was one of his favorite professors. Sorry. <clears throat> that he had shaped his life and, and helped him decide to become a social worker. <clears throat> I have uh, so many people to thank. The university and the School of Journalism, the great editors that I've worked for, the brilliant and talented reporters like the one who introduced me, um, my wife and my family for supporting me. But most of all, I want to thank Ernie and the faculty here at USC for caring and listening and for shaping my life. Thank you very much.